For thousands of years, Jerusalem, the holiest city in the world, has been fortified and protected by high stone walls. But during Nebuchadnezzar's three attacks on the city between 605 to 586 BC, the walls were breached and broken down. The temple was destroyed, the city was ransacked, and most of its citizens taken as captives to Babylon. During the next 70 years, while the Jews were in captivity, there was an empire leadership change. The Persians overthrew the Babylonians and took control of the then known world. And they gave the Jews permission to return and rebuild Jerusalem. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, they found the city laid waste. Buildings in ruins, temple destroyed, culture and way of life gone, walls broken down. Zerubbabel, one of the Jewish leaders, oversaw the rebuilding of the temple and Ezra, a priest and scribe, restored true worship and guided the people back to God's teachings. But the walls remained broken down and the gates burned. And without secure walls and gates, the city remained vulnerable to attack. People living in a city without a solid wall remained defenseless and humiliated. Nehemiah, a Jewish leader, held a high position in the palace of King Artaxerxes I back in Persia, serving as the royal cupbearer. When some of his friends and family visited him and told him about the broken down walls of Jerusalem, he was deeply saddened and distressed. After praying, he felt impressed to do something about it. So he petitioned the king and asked if he could change jobs and move from his position of royal cupbearer to the governor of Judah and so personally oversee the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. The king agreed and generously provided the resources Nehemiah needed to complete the job. Soon Nehemiah was on his way to Jerusalem where he exchanged his royal cupbearer's robes for overalls and got working organizing the rebuilding of the walls. The first thing Nehemiah did was tour the city to inspect the extent of the damage. The walls were broken down and the work looked challenging, but not impossible. Then he assessed the situation, identified the problems and came up with a workable plan. He then turned his attention to gathering the support of the people and turning his plans into action. He made sure that news spread quickly throughout the city that the walls of Jerusalem were going to be rebuilt. Nehemiah encouraged the people that the task could be achieved and invited them to work with him to make it happen. In no time at all, Nehemiah had plenty of people to help him. He soon had everything organized and ready to go. But his plan didn't just happen. It wasn't created on the fly. At the core of Nehemiah's planning was prayer. He prayed on his own and also with his workers. He made prayer the center of his plan. And his plan was a splendid one. He divided up the wall into sections giving one portion to one group of family and another portion to another group of family. This way, everybody had something to do and was responsible for some part of the wall. With so many people working, the wall began to take shape. Some mixed mortar, others lifted stones. Others carefully measured the distances to ensure that each stone was set in the right place. Women and children brought food and water to sustain the workers. Then there were those who checked the levels. They used a plumb bob or plummet to establish exact vertical lines and ensure the structure was centered. This was vitally important because a few degrees out of plumb and the whole wall could come tumbling down. Nehemiah's plan, his strategy, worked splendidly. With all this combined and well-coordinated effort, the walls of the city were soon going up fast. Day by day, the wall rose higher and higher. More and more sections were joined, closing up the gaps. 
In just 55 days, less than two months, the Great Wall was completed. All because one man had vision, faith and courage. So in summary, here are three important lessons we can learn from Nehemiah when it comes to facing the challenges of everyday life. First, start with prayer. Nehemiah showed us the importance of prayer. Like him, we can open our hearts in prayer, tell God about our problems and challenges, ask him for guidance and follow his leading. Second, plan. As soon as Nehemiah knew what God wanted him to do, he developed a plan. He put a strategy in place. The plan included getting resources, teamwork, persistence and cooperation, plus trust in God. We should take time to make careful plans and listen to God's guidance. Third, be patient and hopeful. Nehemiah showed patience. He prayed and waited for God to answer his prayer. Nehemiah believed God would use him to get the wall rebuilt. He never tried to attack his enemies, but trusted God would deal with them. In our fast-paced, instant delivery world, there are times when we should slow down and wait on God's timing. Nehemiah recognized God's blessings and favor and shared the news with the people to give them hope. We bring hope when we share how God has worked in our lives. Nehemiah gives us some good ideas on how to deal with the troubles and challenges we face in everyday life. If you would like to find out more about how to trust God and follow His plan for your life, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for you today. It's the Bible reading guide, God's Plan for My Life. Just go to our website, tij.tv, or scan the QR code on the screen to receive your free gift now.